on the screen are two signals, square waves, that are displaced in time by about 30 nanoseconds. This is 50 nanoseconds per division. If we go to 20 nanoseconds per division, you see that this would be 20, this would be 40, so about 30 nanoseconds difference between the two. They're, they're 1 megahertz square waves. So why are we looking at this? Well, often in a design, you'll find it convenient to look for situations where two signals have a phase difference. Let's suppose that these are two of the clocks that we talked about in a previous video. In other words, this is, say, clock distribution 1 and this is clock distribution 2. Well, um, in most cases, you probably want this clock and this clock to be exactly in phase. And one of the things you might want to look at is where are they not in phase? Where are they, is one of them delayed too much to meet the design specifications? Another case where this might occur is in a data bus where perhaps this is data bit 0 and this is data bit 1 and they are skewed in a similar manner. So today we're going to talk about using the delay trigger on the MS-05000 to find situations like this where two signals that are either supposed to be separated by a certain amount are not separated by that amount or two signals that are supposed to be coincident are separated by too much and be able to trigger on those occurrences. Now previously we have seen a similar uh, situation with using a hold trigger to look for a delay time between a clock and a data signal in the case of a D flip-flop. Today we're going to assume that, for example, these are two data signals on a bus that should be coincident, but they aren't. And so, how do we set up the MS-05000 to see that? First, let's take a look at how this might occur. You may recall we looked at a case where, for example, an oscillator signal is divided into a series of uh, outputs for the purpose of driving several different loads in several different locations. And in that case, what we would like is for each of these edges to be lined up perfectly in time. In other words, when this one rises, we would like this one to rise at the same time and the same for this one. Well, the same is true of a data bus. For example, let's suppose that we have a register which has a clock input. And that register has a series of data lines that come in. It would be nice if each of those data lines changed at the same time so that when we get the clock correctly adjusted to latch, for example, data 0, it also latches data 1 through n exactly the same way. So in a design, you might find, for example, that one of these signals, say, occurs at time 0 and the other one occurs at time 0 plus some delta. And we're going to be talking about how do you find a case like that today using the MSO 5000. Well, as we saw a minute ago, let's suppose that this is channel 1 and this is channel 2. In other words, channel 2 is occurring slightly after channel 1 and you'd like to trigger on that. Well that is where a delay trigger can be very useful. And one nice thing about the delay trigger is it will work with uh, any channel in the oscilloscope. 
it does not have to be an analog channel. So if you're working with a couple of the digital channels, you can also use a delay trigger. We're going to demonstrate it using a couple of analog channels, but keep in mind that's just for demonstration purposes. Any of the 20 channels on a properly equipped MSO 5000 can be used, any two of the channels, and the delay measurement is always between two channels. So how do we set up an MSO 5000 to trigger on this uh, delay difference. Well, you connect one channel to one of the signals you're looking for and a second channel to the second signal. Then you have to decide, do I want to look for situations where this occurs after this or cases where this occurs before? And the delay trigger can look for both. The way we set up the delay trigger is you bring up the trigger menu. You then select the type, which in this case is delay. You select source A. In this case, we're using channel 1 for source A, and, and source B is channel 2. Now, as I pointed out, these can be digital channels. One can be analog, and the other can be digital, or they both can be digital, or both analog. Then you decide which edge are you going to be using for uh, this delay timing. In this case, we've chosen a rising edge on source A and a rising edge on source B. Then you have to decide whether you want to look for times that are greater than, less than, outside the range or inside the range of uh, values. Now we're going to look for a value that is greater than, so we're going to use the greater than symbol. Then we're going to click on more, and up here we're going to set a, uh, a delay time. Now notice we have 20 nanoseconds set, and we notice that these two are actually about 30 nanoseconds apart. Let's suppose we had set this to 100 nanoseconds. Well now, as you notice, it doesn't trigger because there is never a time when these two signals are separated by a hundred nanoseconds or more. Similarly, if we go down to 10 nanoseconds, we do see the difference. In other words, you don't have to guess what the exact value is. You just have to find a value that in this case, since we're looking for greater than, we need to find the timing value that, uh, that we're willing to live with. In a high-speed system, that might be only a few nanoseconds. In a lower-speed system, you might be able to tolerate 50 or even 100 nanoseconds of, of skew on a couple of data signals and still uh, it depends on how fast the system is running. Let's suppose in our system that we can tolerate 25 nanoseconds of uh, skew. So we would set the, this to 25 nanoseconds. And you see this particular signal is outside that range and therefore it would be one you'd want to investigate further to find out why these two signals are separated by more than your design spec. So this is how you use a delay trigger and the kinds of places you might use it is to look for any kind of skew between signals that should be within a certain range and for whatever reason they are outside that range could be a couple of clocks, could be a couple of data signals, it could be a control signal uh, and a data signal or something of that sort. So I hope this will help if you're looking for a way to look for this kind of anomaly in an embedded system. Delay trigger is one way. 
uh, set up and hold works very much the same. Uh, it, the choice is really uh, up to you and depends in part on your application and how familiar you are with one particular setup versus the other. So I hope that this has been helpful, informative, perhaps entertaining, and stay tuned. We'll go through a few more of these applications of the MSO 5000 in the future. In the meantime, as always, please stay safe and have a nice day.